Right, so welcome back to Adventure 82. We're actually outside doing something more along the channel's normal things. So today you find me outside the original entrance of Fort Regent, which as you can see, was constructed in 1806. And if you look just down here, you'll see a separate gate section here that's in concrete. Uh, that was another entrance into the side there because this was at one point in time a coal store, but we'll get into the history of the place once we're inside. So we'll have a look at the inside and we'll have a look at the outside. And uh, hopefully I won't have to switch to my phone because you've come up here and uh, found out that we only have half a camera battery. It's entirely Erica's fault, I just want to point that out. Cut to the intro. So this, like I say, this is the image original main entrance. So back in the day, they would have marched in through here. They would have gone up here and then through this double door here. We're actually quite fortunate, you normally can't get around here. But uh, I'll show you the other side of that door once we're inside the fort. So without any further ado, Let's go inside. Right, so we're now inside the fort. The fort has its heart and soul set originally in the military, specifically the, German militia, the Jersey militia, although there were British forces, um, certain uh, battalions um, and Scottish ones who also stayed within the fort before it was turned into this. So the fort's had various stages of its life over the years, uh, but as a military base, it was here, and then there was a second base up on South Hill, which is next door to here, um, which you'll see South Hill in a separate video. Um, but anything that's made of granite, so, excuse me, Erica, these arches, for instance, that's part of the original building. As you can see, the original, if I zoom in, hopefully you can see it anyway. Let's have a look. The original headstone. There. There you go, see? Mentioning again Lieutenant General Don. Uh, he's also the reason Don Street and Don Road have their name. So, uh, I'm not sure if the clock's original or not. It looks like it may well be. But, uh, yeah, it has its soul in the military. So these would have all been the archways would have been storage areas for things like uh, the back in the day would have been uh, for the, the 900 pound cannons, uh, 800 pound, sorry, 100 pound cannons they had here. Uh, they would have stored the cannonballs in there. Some of these would have been uh, quarters for the uh, higher ranking officers, um, the normal uh, standard soldiers would have been out in this area here, which originally wouldn't have had a roof on top of it, would have just been dirt and ground, grass, and they would have been in tents. Um, and then of course, there's your cannon, see like that. And then of course, it evolved into being just a coal store, which meant they just basically, up until the 1960s, they used to just bring all the coal that came into Jersey up here, the coal, the coal people, like for instance, Nichols the coal people my granddad worked for would come up here, pick up their coal in the trucks, go deliver it, come back, fill up, and so on. Um, and that's how that would have worked back in the day. As you can see, there used to be a garrison. This particular gun, this picture here, shows uh, a gun that was actually found whilst they were renovating the building where they decided to turn it into a leisure center. There are various cannons dotted around the entire fort. All of them are original guns from the, from the fort region itself. Um, there are a couple here that are actually slightly later than that. They're from 1940s when the fort was used uh, by the Germans during the occupation. Um, it was used as a stronghold 
because uh, it had such a clear view over the coast. But with that said, most people remember it from when it was turned into a leisure and sports center, which would have been back in the 60s. So back in, <coughs> pardon me, back in the late 60s, they decided that they were trying to figure out what to do with Fort Regent. A lot of people weren't too keen on the idea of converting it from a coal stall into this because we're quite happy with it being a cold stall. But at the end of the day, it needed to be more functional. They wanted something for tourism, which in the 60s, 70s and 80s, you, were, you will be very aware, was astronomically going upwards for Jersey. People had gone through the stages in the 50s of um, getting themselves back on their feet, recovering from the Second World War, and people were starting to have money again to go away, but not miles away, because flight was still a relatively new thing. So a lot of people used to come here from France, from England, um, and from other parts of Europe as well. Um, Inter-island travel was a lot more common then as well. That was easier to do. So you could stay in one island and visit the other islands on day trips. These were not problems then. They're now, they're current day problems, but they weren't problems then. The roof though that we have on top of the, what's now called Queen's Hall, which is just behind us here, this round building. That's where you see the famous domed roof that you see from the outside. That roof, when it was put on in the 1960s, was in fact the first of its kind. So uh, Fort Regent is actually uh, a bit of a, a pioneer in the domed roof because no, no building in history had had a domed roof um, quite to the size of the, the, the one that's on top of Fort Regent. I'll show you that when we're outside. I would show you it from the inside, but currently because uh, it's a weekday, it's being used by uh, schools and things and obviously YouTube, privacy, filming children, it's not happening. So, those of you who were here in the 80s will probably be familiar with certain things like for instance this thing here now that says Caligo Tigers, you'll probably remember as I do and, pro and Erica does behind the Camry as being actually a chippy. No, that was there. No, that was the chippy. No. Then they moved it to there oh, okay. for the jungle gym. And then you'll also remember that uh, back in the day that all these little archways here, if Erica stops filming my shoulder, uh, were little shops. And then the first one, two, and then missed that gap there, three, were all arcades. They were all owned by the same person. And then you had various other little gift shops and things along here. And of course, the other thing that, that uh, Fort Regent was very famous for its swimming pool, which has since been demolished. But I'll show you what's left or how you can tell where, it, where, where everything used to connect. Um, but for now, the other, moment, the other tier two things that stick in my mind anyway for Fort Regent were the staging area where you used to get your shows and your entertainment and the dancing water fountain, which started off life mounted into here, what's now behind this metal shutter as a garden. Then moved it out and they put it down on the other side, which if I borrow the camera off of Erica, because I know where I'm going, you also can tell the age of the building because if you look up here, you can see it's still got the original guttering and it says GR there for George Royal, which for those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, royal family within the UK or the history of the UK, that would have been Queen Elizabeth who just died last year. That would have been her father, George V. So if you come through here, the water fountain used to be here. You can actually see where it used to be bolted to the floor still. But it was here. And then you had your stage where this jungle gym now is, which I can't film because again, children. But these stairs and especially those stairs over there, which now have a gate on them, are synonymous with taking you up to what was the former uh, swimming pool. And then this, this was the original jungle gym. I think it's now like a, what's it, like kickboxing, taekwondo, something or another. Because what happened was they converted it into a leisure centre, they updated it. It opened as a leisure centre in, I think it was 19, 
68, 69 that it first opened. And they came up with a funding solution where they'd update it every couple of years to keep it fresh and new. This was the jungle gym. You can still see the old padding from the 80s at the back, but that's all that's left. This, I believe now, is like I say, like for, I don't know if it's kickboxing, gymnastics. It's used for some sort of sport, unless they've left now, actually, as well, because I, I haven't seen anybody in there for a while. But this is nowhere near as busy as it would have been in the day. Uh, you can see all the big speakers hanging from the ceiling, harking back to the times when you would have had shows and music uh, and a very bustling, lively place full of tourists, which now isn't the case. This area you can see that Eric is stood in front of was had tables and chairs there where if you bought food from down here before, where we were looking, you could have come up here and eaten it up here. But uh, uh, you got to the mid 80s um, and the states decided that, they would, that tourism wasn't where the money was. The money was in finance. And Fort Regent was becoming a burden to them because without having any real kind of tourism, um, which they weren't focusing on so much anymore, it was costing more to maintain than it was making. Although, as I believe, most people have said to Fort Regent never really turned a profit. But when you make a leisure centre that's meant for the people of the island and for the tourism, and it's sponsored by the government, it shouldn't necessarily have to make a profit for it to make sense. But I digress. So here is the original door where you used to go through to get to the swimming pool. Down here, you'll remember there used to be an aquarium with a big shark above it. And then these bigger arches now, which is set up to do children's parties. There's a few of them along there. Those also would have been uh, back in the day, little shops. Uh, um, and little other bits and pieces for children and families to do. Erica, specifically, spent a lot of time here watching the shows and things. Um, and remembers the show. I did see so many of the shows. A lot of things people will remember, and I think you do as well, isn't it? It's Pluto's Playtime in the swimming pools. Yeah. Right, um, <laughs> right, so for those of you who don't know what Pluto's Playtime is, we're going to have to find another door to get out. Okay, go on then. Right, so for those of you who don't know what Pluto's Playtime is, uh, when they had the swimming pool um, on Saturdays and also on, I think it was Tuesdays as well, I believe, Thursdays maybe, um, when you had the, uh, when the kids were off, like on half terms and things, they used to have something called Pluto's Playtime where they'd fill the swimming pool, the big one. Uh, adults are in pool with giant inflatables and floaties and stuff for the kids to play with. Um, it was very, very popular. I went there quite a few times. But, uh, right, so now we're outside. You can see here where they filled this in with ground. But you can also see here with the brickwork where they filled in where the cannons would have pointed out of the wall. So you can see they would have had one, two, three cannons, four, I think there's another hole up there. Four cannons there. And then if we come up here quickly, this rather ugly looking metal gate, fence, is uh, the remnants of the swimming pool. So the swimming pool would have been over this side. And you would have... Yeah, so you would have had... The swimming pool originally came through this door and then you had like um, a walkway that was built in. And it came through from there, it went on top of these steps, these steps you couldn't get to, and it went on top of the wall, and it went across, and it went through to the building, which would have been over there in the clearing, but that's no longer there. So that's not there. You can see remnants here of where they've built later on, uh, a concrete wall on top of an old German gunpoint, 
and then these chimneys, in case you're wondering where these brick chimneys are for, this is from when they upgraded it into a leisure centre. These are the outputs for the heating system that's built in, because it's got boilers. But if we go up here, the Germans' original gun points, they retracted those, and then they built this on top, and then you had a big massive gun mounted on here. I'm not sure which one it is, but I bet you Shane or Paul do. The view from here is stunning. Right, what we want to do is get onto this path over here to show you the next bit of history. So we'll get over that side and then I'll be back with you. Right, so we're on the other side. Um, and I'll be honest, I haven't actually been on this part of the fort since probably the early 2000s, about 2000, maybe six, seven when uh, Lydia and Blade were small uh, and we brought them up here just before the pool shut but uh, that's not the case anymore but if we come along here I'll show you what's left of the site of the swimming pool I'm trying to explain it a bit more so you saw the green metal fence on the other side there so, and you can see this green metal fence here. So, the site of the actual swimming pool building was here, on the other side of this fence, which you may remember if you watched... Now, which video was it we were up here for? I can't remember. Oh, it's all a blur, people. I do apologise. But it went from there, you can see the green fence now there in the distance, over there. There's a walkway came through here, you can see the concrete support there on top of the wall for it. And it came through here, reached this wall here, and then went into the main building which was here, with the iconic wave shape. This area, you can see here, this is all the abandoned east wing uh, back in the days of tourism, this was actually where uh, seasonal staff used to stay within this main pit here. Um, it's abandoned now. Um, I've been told you can get in there and have a look. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, there may be an abandoned Fort Regent East Wing video coming your way. I am. Um, Obviously, as um, everybody's aware now, <coughs> I'm um, aware leaving the island in June, but uh, I plan to capture as much of Jersey that I haven't caught yet as I can before I go. So, yeah, and some of our trips back, obviously I'll do some more. Right, so to continue our story, after going into the finance situation, in uh, the late 80s the forts then became kind of like i say a uh, almost a dead weight in the, in the in the a thorn in the side of the plans of the states of jersey so they stopped putting as much money into it and gradually it fell into disrepair um, in 1991 they took away the cable car, which was quite iconic for the, um, for the Fort Regent people who'd been here. Um, many of you remember the cable car, I know who watched this. Uh, people who are watching this that don't remember the cable car because they're too young. Um, I, that's just really quite unfortunate for you. Uh, it was, they were pretty awesome. Um, and then by the mid to late 90s, all the fairground uh, stuff had been removed, definitely by the early 2000s. Um, but uh, it was all, it's all gone. So you can tell where a lot of it was. So here, where it says danger slow, you couldn't have cars come in here originally. There was a play area here made of, with sand and a uh, big tall climbing frame all made of wood, swings, you name it. This concrete base here, it's all that's left of the ghost train. 
Now, in case anybody's wondering, as Erica probably is right now, well, how is the ghost train so bloody big then? The actual, they, they modified it. So the ghost train would actually go through uh, one window, wind around slightly inside and then come back through another window. And then it was a zip line. Um, and then they put a zip line in temporarily for a while here where this van's now parked. That was, that was that swinging boat thing. I think they still have them. Is it Blackpool still have them? Uh, that was where the swinging boat was. And then it was later changed to this weird ride thing, futuristic thing. You know, those ones where you sit down and then it kind of moves on the outside and then people are getting jolted around inside. I don't know what you call that thing, but that's what that was. And then way over in the distance there, you can probably see that little play area with the very faded brollies. There we go, now you can see it. That is where they used to have the waltzer. And that white staircase is where they used to have one of those fairground shot things. You know where you have like the holes in the people's mouths and then you have to shoot the water into the mouths. Um, and they had uh, another one. I might be getting the two mixed up because uh, one was over there and the other one they had was one of those ones with a gun and used to shoot the targets it was wild west yes, themed that was that because right yeah next to the door there yes that's now padded off that's where you used to come in yeah yeah there used to be a little thing and you could go behind and take pictures like you were in jail like that <laughs> i suppose you did this i did it was great <laughs> <laughs> right okay so as you can see it's changed a lot you can see the original small cannons there. They are actually originals from the fort. We'll go a bit further down here and I'll show you what happened to the next section. So notice we're going on our travels. Where there's bits like this with these little discs that have numbers on. They did a history of the fort walk, but you can't also even do that anymore because a lot of the history bits have been removed. So it doesn't make any sense. This was a bench area. So, yeah, see there's another kind of plaque there. There's this bench area, this bench is still here. Although why you'd sit here now, because they don't maintain the bushes. So you just look at bush. The view, if I lift the camera up, that you can get, is probably quite nice. The view that I get is that. That's not nice. So, you can see what I mean when I say they just don't care no more about this place. There's been talks over the years, there's always talks, it's the fort about fixing this, doing that, the roof, that and something else, and they come up with plans. They even got as far as actually drawing plans and releasing with the JEP, showing you what they're gonna do. Uh, but just like the hospital over here, it never seems to actually happen. So, as we're coming across here, you can see this is the Cedar Flats. Now there used to be a shortcut up to here from the Cedars. That appears to have been removed. But we're now walking along the Eastern Wing. Down below us is actually a road. Uh, it's the other side of, it's the other end of um, Regent Road, which you may be familiar with if you watch the Jersey Eastern Railway video. I think it was the Green Street one because uh, Regent Road winds through here, goes through and ends up at Snow Hill in a staircase. And a man, a man commented on how he thought it was the most pointless road ever. Why would you end a road in a staircase? So, anyway. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. So you might be able to see the score marks here on the corner of the uh, wall. That's because what they had here back in the day was a snake side that used to weave around the corner backwards and forwards until you got to the bottom. You can see where they used to have a planter, which by all accounts hasn't had plants in for a while. You can see here where they used to have the English and the Jersey flag and the big pole in the middle used to have the Fort Regent flag with Humphrey the lion on it. Aww. If anybody remembers Humphrey the lion, Humphrey was awesome. Everybody loves Humphrey. Now down below here, You'll see there's a building there that used to have like a mini version of bowling in it and, and a few, blowing. yeah, and a few more arcade bits. I bet you that's just abandoned. We are going to look at the bottom after on our way out, but I bet you that's abandoned now. Like most of it is 
what I'm actually looking forward to showing you is what remains of the cable car area, which, if I'm honest, isn't much. You can see here where there used to be gardens and stuff here. That was a rose garden. Now, I don't know if you can, but the last time I came here, it was sealed off. We've got another plaque. You can see here, look, how they just haven't, haven't bothered for years. The paths are still clear, so they must be maintaining it to a degree, I'm guessing. But, now see, last time I was here, the door that used to take you through to there was shut, so you couldn't get through. Whether you can get through now, because their argument back then was that you could, they couldn't let you through into there, because it was unsafe because of all the cable car bits. They've removed the cable car station from this end. They removed it, I think, was it last year? The year before? The year before. 2021, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they removed it just as everybody was coming out of the pandemic when most people were still in lockdown and there was no bugger who could stop them. So if you come around here, you've got this here now, which has got goals in it. That's the former site of the Dodgems. The building over here with the white roof used to be the Quasar. Uh, which was like a laser gun thing, wasn't it? That was quite cool. That was fun. But, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll have a close look at that stuff down at the bottom. You can see the drop there. That used to be a little bit of a staircase thing. I'm sure I remember jumping down some of these. Right, you can see here, the staircase here that takes you down to the garden area to bring you out. The bit that you got left there, that used to go into the cable car um, station to take you down into Snow Hill. That's all now been removed. It was also a very pretty rose garden. There was a waterfall, there was a pond. Whether it's still accessible or not, I don't know, because the door to get down there is actually on the lower level down here where the cars are. So I'll have a look. Um, but for now, uh, there's one more section to show you from up top, and then we'll be going downstairs and having a look. So, States of Jersey would like me to not show you anything else because I might fall. But where? There's a fence there. There's a fence there. There's a fence all the way down here. I don't care about the rotting wood, so that means nothing to me. So unless I climb over this fence and literally throw myself down there, where am I going to fall? Answers on a postcard. I don't understand. Right, oh look, I can't use the stairs either, I might trip. Look, the stairs are off limits. They're so dangerous. What the flub? Right, anyway, I shall continue down here, despite the fact I might die. Um, so I'm risking my life for you now, people, filming this next bit. Um, yeah, I'll see you around the corner. Also, whilst I'm up here, I think it's a good idea, to be honest. We are, we're all into history on this channel. So, you see this brick building here with the blue windows? You can't miss it, right? That is what they replaced the Forum Cinema with in the early 1980s. That monstrosity of an office block. Do you see what I mean? It was slowly creeping its way in very slowly like darkness across the floor the finance was weeding its way in people and that's where it came from that's where this is how it all started but um i mean i don't have it and it sounds like it i don't have a downer on finance i just don't see the necessity for the states to decide to give up on everything else for it that's what I'll never understand. That's what less that's what led Jersey or has led Jersey to the situation it's in now, where it struggles to stay in the black because it relies on one thing for its money. One. Right, now as we come round here, you may remember that now I believe it was this corner. But it might be that corner, which I can't film because it's that there's like a children's play group thing over there, so I can't film over there. But I'm sure it was this corner because I can see the marking there on the floor. There used to be a little red round 
like a merry-go-round thing. It was like one continuous circle and it used to play music as the kids went around. It was small children. And then it used to rise up on an angle slightly and keep going around slowly and then come back down. It was for small children. So they didn't get too scared. This, this was quite cool. This is probably one of the coolest things that I ever liked at the fort. Now, I always wanted to be able to drive cars from the moment that I went in my granddad's car when I was a kid, um, albeit his cars weren't brilliant, they were Toyotas, that's another matter. You know, it's, you can only get better from a Toyota Carina. But <coughs> here it used to be like a, a kid's little go-kart racetrack um, where you could race around on the track, obviously. Um, so this was all a pretty garden. This is now this <laughs> i'll let erica tell you about this bit but i'll just finish showing you the track first this is one of erica's favorite bits of the fort but if we come up here onto this bridge quickly you can see it's now over hurdles but this was a racetrack it used to go up this way all the way up there, round there. You used to have a little slight hairpin here where it came in, back out, round. Pretty basic track, but difficult enough if you're a kid who hasn't really driven before. Now it's just hurdles. And I've never, never once seen anybody up here. And that little house there is where they used to keep the cars and where they used to be able to recharge them. And there's a remnant there of it there as well, the power cables. And that was the other way back into the fort after you'd been there, so you'd have to walk all the way back around but it's all gone. This is an original feature of the fort. This is how they used to tell people about the weather. Um, if there was unwarned ships and stuff about the weather as they were coming in. Um, they still use it sometimes for certain things. They don't use it as much as they used to. Um, they were going to take it down at one point, um, but there was a lot of argument and uh, Jersey Heritage also stepped in, so they now maintain it. They look after it, but it doesn't do half the signals it used to do. But um, there's a whole section on this on the Jersey Heritage website if you want to look that up. And that, that's just a boring mobile phone mask. Nobody cares about that. So, um, yeah, hang on a minute. I'm going to remove my microphone for a minute. So my sound might sound different because I'm holding it. But that's because we're now going to conduct oh, an no. Erican interview. So Erica, yes. if I give you this microphone, thank you. would you be so kind to tell the people what this was and why you're not very happy? Well, this was a mini golf course. I think you can see little bits of it here and there. I mean, compared to nowadays, it wasn't a very good mini golf course, but at least we had one. See, I didn't use this much, but I vaguely remember that this building here was where you used to get the little putters and the golf balls. That, and it was a little cafe as well. I was going to say, I remember, had... I was gonna say I remember hot dogs. <laughs> of course you remember hot dogs. I remember dogs. hot dogs, <laughs> and I remember cans of Coke and Sunkist. Oh, Anybody remember, remember Sunkist? Sun <laughs> I love Sunkist. It was so much nicer than Fanta. But yeah, so that, that's why Eric is not happy. She spent quite a lot of time with this. Yeah. So is it? If the... you go down there, see the other. Well, let's go down there. Oh God! See, look, we're wrong. see. I'm the cameraman now. See, we switch roles. <laughs> I spent a lot of time down here. Apart from when they took it all away. <laughs> which was very annoying. And it was really pretty. There were so many flowers. Right. And you know how much I like flowers. Yes. So well, you were a florist, weren't you? Trainee. Yeah. But yeah, had I stayed there. Oh, speaking of flowers, never mentioned to Erica anything about blue roses. Oh, they kill them, you know. They kill the flowers really quickly. Yeah, Don't buy dyed flowers. If it's not the natural colour, you shouldn't buy them. <laughs> it's not good for the plant. Uh. We're starting a new section in our videos, are we? Erica's <laughs> flower advice. <laughs> well, Break up the history with flower advice. Right, yes. Right. See here. Right. So this is where the man used to be, isn't it? With his hut and his golf balls. Yeah. And then this side, see that little one there? Yeah. They had a shutter thing. Right. And you could get ice creams and junk food, Right, crisps. now you're mentioning ice cream. 
Yeah. This is you. <laughs> yeah. Right. How many of these ice creams were a mint crisp? Oh, I love a mint crisp. But they did the Mr. Whippies too, and I really like those. Yeah, see, when I was a kid in the 80s, nothing was better than the Zooms. Yeah. I just like Zoom. Yeah. yeah. And there were picnic benches all right. along here. Right. Oh, do you know what else they don't do now? Think about ice cream bits. Oh, she wants to show you picnic something else. Picnic benches all along here. So this was here. all picnic benches? It was. All of it? All of it. There was right. about eight, I suppose. Right. And they're all different colours. Oh, do you know what else I remember, actually? Do you know I remember in the 80s as well? I bet you do as well. Go on. Those little tubs you used to get with the cardboard lid of ice cream. From oh, walls. and a tiny little spoon. And do you remember they used to do them with, like, the strawberry sauce, like, whipped, whipped through it, like a raspberry yes, ripple? that was my favourite. And you get the vanilla. Yes. And then it went down to just vanilla in the 90s, and now they seem to have disappeared off the face of the planet. You can get them at Samurai stores. Can you? Yes. They're very rare. They are very, very You tend to have to wear like four or five quid on like a Ben and Jerry's now. Oh, it's actually ridiculous. No, they're not five. You joking? Five quid for a Ben and Jerry's? Right, okay. You, you want a proper tub? Yeah. It's about nine quid. Right, nine it's quid. nine pound for a tub of Ben and Jerry's in Jersey. Tell us what it is in the UK. I bet you it's cheaper. <laughs> I mean, because you know, this is this is the problem. I love the island, but living here is so hard. I mean, like the milk over here now, it was almost two pound a litre. One pound sixty in a couple of shops and then one pound ninety in a few others. So it depends on the shop. Basically, it depends if you're going to Sandpiper or not. Right, <laughs> so we'll go downstairs and we'll look at the next bit. I'll reattach my microphone to my uh, top and we'll go back to Erica being the camera woman. I think are you completely finished complaining about the golf course. I suppose. Okay, she's going to finish about the golf course. So we'll go downstairs, we'll look at the bottom, and then we'll work our way out. Right, I'm back. No, I'm not down there yet. I lied, I apologise. I remembered, near the beginning of the video, I said I'd show you this uh, pioneering dome that, the, that uh, Fort has. So, that means I've had to come across the bridge and come to the other side of the top section of the fort just to show you that. I promised you I would, so I will. This is the only well-maintained German gunpoint. Um, it's a very good example though, I have to say. This would have had a metal door on it, and that's where they would have stored the bullets. But, uh, right, so you've got here, that's the original. That's the glass roof. And if we take you a bit further along, you should be able to get a lovely view of the dome. You can kind of see it here now. What you can mainly see is Erica. I can't see anything, I'm not <laughs> Right, so. If I don't fall, because apparently, remember, we saw the sign, they don't want me to fall. If I stand up here, you can see the dome there over the waves roof. That dome was pioneering in its day, it was the first one in 1967 when that was put on top of Fort Regent, which was then called Gloucester Hall. Yes. Uh, shows. Eric is on about her shows again. Right. <laughs> no. Well like bands and yeah i know bands and my mum took me in there once what would she take me to see it was something from the city jerry and the pacemakers <laughs> yeah there's loads of posters about i think isn't that where the beatles went when they visited jersey they were in there they were yeah, yeah. see we had the beatles right anyway so that's the domed roof like i say 1967 pioneering in its day not been seen since uh, for Jersey to do anything that pioneering um, because the state's scared of spending their money on anything useful. They'd rather spend it on a uh, statue. Closing the public toilets down by uh, Elizabeth Castle. Finance centre. Yeah. And if you saw my video about the International Finance Centre, that. But um, yeah, so I will actually go downstairs. Look, see the stairs and I'm going down, I promise. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Right, so I've just been checking the footage on my camera. I do it every now and again because sometimes the microphones play up. And I've noticed I filmed about 30 to 40 minutes of footage depending on how it's edited. And I don't want to bore you guys to death. So, what we're going to do is, I'm going to give this camera to Erica. See, boo. Um, I'm going to give the camera to Erica. We are now going to head 
down there but you'll see it in the next one because i'm going to have to leave this one here and then we'll come back in part two and we'll work our way out um, and depending on how long that takes we'll also maybe have a look at the south hill side that used to be part of the fort but until then i will see you in part two I told you I was definitely going downstairs this time. Ooh, creepy.